Uh, we're going we're gonna to take it down just a little bit with something a little bit more contemplative. And uh, this is actually the next piece is just some live in studio music with someone I had the honor to meet recently, um, both at the uh, Nisanan Heritage Day, which is part of the World Indigenous Peoples Day. Uh, I also got to see her um, at the Maidu Village, which is located out at Sycamore Ranch in uh, Yuba County. But very happy and honored to have here tonight on the show, performing live, Mignon Ellie. Thank you, Michael. Very honored to be here. This first song I want to dedicate to all those water protectors out at Standing Rock in North Dakota. And uh, it's called the Lakota Lullaby. Hopefully it will bring good vibes to all the people out there, a lot of love, peace, healing. It's a lot of work to be done. next song is called Stampede, dedicated to the last of the wild buffalo in Yellowstone Park. And this was gifted to me by an elder, a Lakota elder, when I went to the Unity concert in the Black Hills of South Dakota. That was this last September. Wild is the way. Let the buffalo roam. So this is a fast beat. Even.
And uh, just a little bit of some video I shot a couple weeks ago. As you may or may not know, we do broadcast every Sunday from 6 to 8 p.m. Uh, this week we're broadcasting live from Chico from Butte County Arts and Culture Television. We also broadcast from Nevada County through NCTV and the Green Screen Institute. But a couple weeks ago we also broadcasted from Truckee Tahoe Television with Rory and Dan. And I took the opportunity between snowstorms to go out and just to shoot some of the amazing art in the galleries that are there in downtown Truckee. So thanks for tuning in. And uh, I'm very happy and honored next to have another in-studio guest. We're just, uh, we're blockbusting it tonight. We're getting ready for a couple week break before the holidays. But uh, I'm here in the studio live with the uh, publisher of The Lotus Guide committed to education, awareness, and health here in the Sierras and the Foothill area. And next part of the show is called Rahasia Uncensored with Rahasia. Thank you. Here again, you made it. Yep, made it again. Good. Ready Good. to roll. Uh, what are you up to these days? Oh, these days, um, actually we're in our deadline right now for the magazine, so it gets a little crunched. Um, it's a busy time of the year for us. But uh, it's all good. Great. It's all really good. Great. And I know with this segment, Rahasia Uncensored, it's, a, it's kind of an opportunity where you can speak very candidly about topics I know you're very passionate about and that I also share your perspective. And uh, <clears throat> I think this week we're going to be talking a little bit about the chemtrail conspiracy, so-called yeah. conspiracy. And, and here's where it gets into... Um, Actually, my interview with Dane Wigington from Geoengineering Watch, he gets into this because when you look up chemtrails on Google, it's going to take you down a rabbit hole of conspiracy issues and you're going to end up on Mars with aliens and all kinds of things. They have created trolls and think tanks just to do nothing but undermine that term. But there's better terms like climate engineering because it's important when you're doing your research to go where the, the hard facts are in the science. And this is an important time. We need to all pay attention. I mean, one reason why you and I are here, we have a venue, we have a circle of influence where we can start talking about these things. And there's still people out there that don't really realize that chemtrails are a real thing. I had a lady the other day, she says, why well, I don't believe in chemtrails. And I had to exp it's not a religion. <laughs> you know, this, we're, we're talking hard, cold facts. Right. And there's over 50 climate engineering programs right now that we know of. Extremely nefarious by oh, nature, yeah. too. I mean, we're messing with systems that are already fragile because of all of our pollution and toxins and everything else. EMFs and yeah. everything. Yeah, and, and we're not even going to get into the methane expulsion on the upper Siberian shelf. We're not getting into the tundra that's melting and releasing more methane. That could be another game changer. But we should at least stop doing things that are we know is not working. 
Great. Good. Well, Good I know you did your guest. homework on this one, so let's go over now. I know you uh, uh, composed a piece of video for tonight's show, and what are we going to see here in a moment? Yeah, what we're going to see is <clears throat> it's actually a half-hour interview, but I pulled out a couple of snippets, you know, and Dane is going to be, in this first part, he's going to explain exactly what uh, climate engineering is and why we need to pay attention to this because at a grassroots movement, if we don't stop this by letting everybody know it's happening, it's going to continue. And I think this comes out in here why it can't continue. Right. So, yeah, if we could roll the first clip, that right. would be great. Here we go. Uh Dane. This is Dane Wigington of geoengineeringwatch.org and we're going to be talking to him today about chemtrails and solar reflection and trying to explain a little bit about what this is for the people who really don't get it yet. You want to explain a little bit, Dane? Well, many people, again, have heard non-science terms in relation regard to what's happening in our skies. Most people have heard of weather modification. Most people understand weather modification is real, ongoing, but they're used to seeing the small prop-driven Cessna planes with some silver iodide flares strapped, strapped to the wings. Those are not climate engineering programs. We have massively, unimaginably larger global climate engineering programs that have been going on for some 70 years. We have the documentation to back this up. And so this supersedes and really negates all the localized weather modification programs because they're much, much larger. The science terms are very important if you want to introduce people to this issue because if they have the science terms, they'll find their way to science fact and not intentionally distributed false information with non-science terms like chemtrails. The chemtrails term leads people straight to conspiracy theory and hoax, and that's what the power structure wants. So terms like climate engineering, geoengineering, solar radiation management, stratospheric aerosol injection. Those are the science terms. Even, even just the simple term climate engineering or geoengineering, those two terms can lead to a mountain of science data. And what this involves, Rahasha, is the power structure has always wanted any means of power they could ever get. We all know that. And what greater source of covert power could one have than to be able to manipulate the weather? You can bring a country to its knees without ever firing a shot. And in fact, that's what they've been doing for many, many decades. And the population as a whole is still largely unaware of it. And we need to change this fact. So the major components that these programs involve is to, one, saturate the atmosphere with light scattering, electrically conductive, unimaginably small nanoparticulates. We have patents, about 160 patents, for climate engineering that go back all the way to, some go back even to the uh, late 20s and 30s, but the majority, of course, in the most recent decades. But these patents call for various processes of solar radiation management. That's a very primary component of geoengineering. And the stated goal for solar radiation management is to try to slow down the greenhouse effect that's happening on the planet, the buildup of greenhouse gases, by distributing light scattering particles all over the globe in the atmosphere to try to deflect some of the sun's incoming thermal energy. And in fact, for your listeners, that's how I became aware of these programs because I have a background in solar power. I'm a former Bechtel Power employee. I worked on some of the first commercial solar plants in the continental US. I have a, a large off-grid home that was the cover of the world's largest renewable energy magazine in Northern California is where my home is. And when I began to lose massive amounts of my solar uptake from whatever these aircraft were leaving behind, I knew that could not be condensation. I was losing on some days 60, 70, even 80% of my solar power uptake from whatever these aircraft were leaving behind. So that's the purpose of solar radiation management, to block the sun. And, and the climate engineers, the military industrial complex never takes into account the consequences for whatever they're doing. So they've created a situation that's scientifically termed global dimming. And from science study, we know that 
20 to 30 percent of the sun's direct rays don't reach the planet anymore. Rahasya, how many truly blue days do you see lately? Not many. They're mostly silver. There you go. And this is indicative of the particles that are in the atmosphere. And we're not guessing that these particles are there because we've done about 70 lab tests in, in Shasta, Siskiyou counties in Northern California. We have lab tests from other counties, other places around the globe. But the amount of toxic heavy metals, which are primary ingredients in climate engineering patents, that's coming down in our breathable air column is unimaginable. So we're breathing what they're spraying. It's contaminated in virtually everything on the ground. And for people to understand the totality of effect from saturating the atmosphere with these particles, it radically disrupts the hydrological cycle, the rain cycle. It destroys the ozone layer. We have unimaginably intense UV radiation bombarding us now. It contaminates soils and waters. And again, the, the other spin-off effects from those three elements is unimaginable. So we're talking about the military industrial complex literally playing God with the weather why? Because they can. And for, for those people who say, why would they do this? I would respond, why wouldn't they do this? Why would we expect them to sit around and ask our permission to manipulate Earth's systems in a way that gives them more power and control? Did they ask our permission when they detonated all the nuclear bombs in the South Pacific? Uh, no, they don't ask permission. They just do it because they can. So in a, in a nutshell, again, this is the attempt to manipulate Earth's life support systems. And I think we can all understand the, the unimaginable dangers that come with that. So here's a question for you, Dane. Let's, let's say this started out as a scientific theory with even the best of intentions. One, they would have to keep doing this, what, forever? And two, I don't think they can afford this, or we can't afford it, so something tells me that greed has entered into the equation. Greed is always at the core of the equation, in fact. Greed and lust for power. As far as them doing this forever, that's what the geoengineering proposals entail. They state this over and over. That though they don't admit the programs are going on, you have the entire climate science community who's bought and paid for at this point from the power structure, the same people that print the money, the same people that run militaries, the same people that own countries. So the science community is telling us that if we geoengineer, as if we're not already, we can never stop. Now that alone should be a red flag of the insanity of these programs. How can you start something that you can never stop when you can clearly not spray the skies all over the globe with thousands of jet aircraft every day forever. How can you possibly do that? So what we create is, in addition to the massive environmental cataclysms that I already started to outline, you have what's called scientifically double catastrophe scenario, which is what happens, because this is already a scientifically studied scenario, what happens when you start to geoengineer, you load energy into the system, go live. you destroy many of the natural protections and processes of the system, and then you stop. What happens? Yeah, it gives wow. you something to think about, huh? I mean, obviously we could listen to uh, this all night because he has a lot of great things to say. Um, but I'm sure we're going to talk about this subjects and uh, even EMFs and some of the other things that are happening as a result of uh, Wi-Fi and also EMF. And also I know uh, a lot of what's related to chemtrails also has to do with HARP and global mapping and stuff. So if you just tune in, you're watching Golden Road Television. I'm here in the studio live talking with Rahasia, and um, why, why don't we see these things or hear any about this on corporate media? Well, <laughs> that's uh, the easy way to answer that is the corporate media is corporate, and there is an agenda behind this, and this comes up in this question that I asked Dane about. Are they going to continue doing this forever? We can't afford it. It costs billions and billions and billions of dollars. They're creating a system that would only work, if it worked at all, if they continue doing it forever. And we can't do that. We have to stop it. So the corporations are in with this, and this is how they make money. And this is where it gets tricky. It's difficult to find the line between a lot of intelligent people really trying to do something or just a bunch of corporate 
greedy people making money. And what was interesting too at the break when we were watching that, we were talking a little bit about, um, of course, everybody's familiar with Monsanto and some of the nefarious things that are happening about eliminating uh, native seeds and uh, uh, original seeds and creating new strands of seeds and hybrids. And a lot of them have really not been researched about the effects on the human body yet, but somehow they're also involved in the mix because as the chemtrails happen, I know it uh, acidifies the soil. And actually I heard a report recently where th there's really not any groundwater left that's not have heavy, heavy metal contamination or extremely uh, acidic. Not even talking about Fukushima and the oceans and the, the, the plastic gyre island and stuff. So people are listening to this, so we want to make you aware about what's happening, but what, what can people do? Well, uh, actually the, the last clip we will pay, play, we'll okay. talk about that some, but I think the best thing to do is like what we're doing right now. We're informing people because the more people that know about this, the more it's going to generate a critical mass. And I do believe that we're on the verge of a really, really an amazing emerging reality of consciousness. So this is a window of opportunity and all of this that's happening that we're talking about could be the catalyst, the fusion to galvanize all of humanity because the geoengineering aspect alone if you just think about it, that is the one thing. I mean, we could talk about the financial thing, the, the GMO thing, the water thing, and it affects people in groups, in areas. Bioregions, But yeah. this affects everybody on the planet because we all breathe. And once this gets out, once it, it really gets out to the public that, wait a minute, they're, they are spraying us with toxins, it's going to wake people up to a lot of other things too. That's the reason the lid is put on this really tight. And, and it's very interesting too, because I know a few years ago when I was living in Santa Cruz, there was a, the information got out that they were spraying to get rid of the moths. And people were up in arms about it because a lot of what they were spraying was different types of hormones and pesticides that had right. un um, research results on the human physiology. But once people found out in communities, and of course they were spraying very progressive communities, unusually so, of like Berkeley and Santa Cruz, people were outraged and it got shut down. So let's go over now to the last video clip because we're gonna try to give you some uh, more ideas of what you can do. We'll be back um, with Rahasia and we're gonna have some music with DJ Power. And as always, we're gonna have a little clip of the Bizarre Bizarre. We always like to showcase what's happening in all the regions. So we're gonna take a little glimpse into a, I an event that happened here in Chico. I want to answer the question of what can I do? Because that's the bottom line. When people hear news this dire, they've been programmed to feel helpless. And that's right. a mistake. Because everyone has a tremendous amount of power in this equation if they would simply choose to use it. To learn how to effectively pass on information on this issue. And if we woke people up to this issue, they would wake up to everything else. They would wake up to the medical industrial complex, uh, deception on vaccinations and, and a thousand other issues. They would wake up because they would know just how far the train is off the tracks, if you will. But on this issue, if you arm yourself with credible data and you learn how to convey that data without putting up people's alarms and just getting them to investigate the issue, if everyone everywhere would help to wake those up around them, those in their circles, so that eventually in some of these circles you're going to have military personnel whose families are forced to wake up to what their military family member is doing or involved with. And if all of us begin to wake those up around us, again, mathematically speaking, it, it becomes exponential extremely quickly and we reach critical mass extremely quickly. And once we reach critical mass, once military families mothers, fathers, sons, daughters, once they know what they're involved with, they're killing their own family, they're killing their own planet. I would argue at that point, we, we kill these programs from the inside out. So at geoengineeringwatch.org, we don't sell anything. Our site is simply a data repository, a tool for people to use. You can download flyers from that site for free, print them locally, very powerful flyer, color, glossy, visual, two-sided. For example, if a person has that with them, you can pass it on without a long oral dissertation. You don't alarm people. You just simply tell them to investigate. And you would be amazed how fast you wake people up because most people are realizing something's radically wrong with the weather. So what I would say to people is don't underestimate your power. Arm yourself with some, some data to keep with you. 
learn how to share it, help us sound the alarm, help us reach critical mass. If we can reach critical mass, we can stop these programs. Sounds like a good plan, Dane. Thank you. Thank you, Rahasha. Wow, very powerful. So you're doing it. Thank you so much. Um, uncensored, not corporately sponsored. Uh, people want more information. You did flash yeah, a little you, bit of info, if, but also you published Lotus Guide, which every month or every, every few three months, months is a wealth of information. How do they get in touch with you? Well, you can go to www.lotusguide.com or you can give us a call at 89Guide. And uh, if you want to watch the complete interview, you can go to www.rahasiauncensored.com. Great. And feel free to contact me anytime. And we'll be posting up uh, some more of those clips. And as always, we don't just produce the show, but we also like to give you links, information, and help empower you. And uh, I know I've been a little under the weather lately, and I know one of the things that always makes me feel good helps to transcend any of the negativities that I might be experiencing is music and dancing. So let's go over now um, to DJ Power, get you moving, keep you warmed up, and we'll be back with just a little more of some talk here in the studio, and uh, that'll bring us about to eight o'clock. So thanks for tuning in, and now DJ Power. All right, now, you know what we about to do. Let's finish this tearing up the house thing. Let's go. Golden Road TV and all my home dances. Let's get into this one. This one's about a beautiful woman, dedicated to a beautiful woman. You know who you are. I got a home. in the building. Wow. I got a little bit of a workout there. Uh, so much we could say right now, but we're out of time and um, you can only fit so much into two hours. So we are going to be broadcasting next Sunday from 3 to 5 p.m. from KVMR. Check out the live broadcast. We're going to do a rebroadcast at our usual time from 6 to 8. Butte County Arts and Culture Television, Truckee Tahoe Television, Nevada County Television and Digital Media Center. Uh, I want to thank KUBU um, 
Radio in Sacramento, KVMR, also Access Sacramento for helping to carry the show. I want to thank you for tuning in. Uh, I think we're just about out of time. Thank you, Rahasia, for Absolutely. all that you do. Lotus Guide, support local, support community, get informed, get inspired, and get active. Uh, it's a big time of a lot of changes on the earth, and you're a part of the transformation. So like the Hopi elders I worked with said, Humanity is heading towards a big waterfall and uh, learn how to lash your canoes together and paddle upstream. It's our vehicle of self-preservation. Thank you, Skylar and Coulter and all the folks here uh, in Chico. We'll see you next Sunday here on Golden Road.